hi. So I thought I would do a little video at giving a tour of my sewing box. Um, this might be interested, interesting for those of you who want to try historical sewing, but it might also be interesting for anyone who just wants to learn more about sewing and learn about more about my process in particular. Um, first of all, I keep all my sewing tools in this little box, or my, my everyday sewing tools that I reach for pretty much constantly. This is an old toffee tin, I think. Um, Bluebird toffee, it says made in England um, and my grandmother gave this to me when I was really little it has Westminster Abbey on the front but I like it because it's a really good size it stays closed which is useful I don't have thread falling around in my backpack and it's just it fits everything that it needs to um, and it doesn't fit anything more so if I if I if I'm trying to add something to this box and it doesn't fit I know I probably should not be adding whatever tool I'm trying to add to this box so it keeps me honest <laughs> When we open it, first you see a pair of scissors. These are just little snips. They're good for cutting threads. They're obviously not big enough to cut actual fabric. Um, they're really sharp though, which that's all you really need. Um, then we also have two little pieces of fabric with needles on them. First is this little piece of linen. This was a swatch from Burnley and Trowbridge and I realized that it would make a good uh, needle holder. All of these needles are, oddly enough, from an old pincushion. Pin or needles often get lost in pincushions because um, the pincushion is usually thick enough to hold the needle without it being found. And one day I decided to take all, to take all the pins out of my pincushion and then squeeze the pincushion until the needles came out. That is actually how you do it. It's, it was a pokey experience. But most of these needles are pretty old because my pincushion is really old. Um, they're like from the 50s and 60s, I'd assume. But older needles are often better quality than the needles we have today. And these are all also much finer than modern needles and they're pretty sharp. So I reach for these needles most, um, the most. But I also have a little piece of um, like fleece. I think, I think I was making a stuffed animal when I was little and I used the need, I put the needles on this little piece of fleece, but I've kept it. And it just has different size needles. There are a few beading needles on here that I reach for sometimes for doing really fine sewing. Um, there's also a large needle that I use for darning. Ooh, this needle's popping out. Um, but these needles I use a lot less than these needles. Next, I have a little piece of felt with some pins on it. These are all pins from Larkin and Smith, um, which is a sewing pattern company. Um, and so they're historical, historically accurate 18th century pins. They're really good for pinning your dress together. Um, there's also an orphan here who doesn't match. I don't know what, that pin should probably go on my other pin cushion. But these, these pins I mostly keep here because I don't really have another good place for them, but they're nice and thick. They're much thicker than modern pins and so they're pretty strong. Uh, next, we have a piece of beeswax. This is what I get questions about most often, but you use beeswax to coat linen thread. Um, I guess other threads too, but linen in particular to keep the thread um, strong and to keep it from tangling. Um, and then uh, linen or be waxed linen thread is also a lot less likely to break. Uh, as you can see, my beeswax has been used a lot. There's little bits of fiber in here, which make it kind of a dark brown. But then the other side has a more yellow piece of beeswax. This is because I melted down a honeycomb from a jar of honey that I had and put it on my little lump of beeswax. Um, I did that because I didn't really know what else to do with the lump of honeycomb and I figured, eh, may as well use it. But I reach for this so often and it, people are so confused about what it is, but it's just beeswax. Next, we have some linen thread. This is Burnley and Trowbridge's linen thread. I really like it. It's a nice thickness. Um, I, I can't remember which one of their linen threads it is. It's like the fine sewing thread. But I use this for almost everything. I used it for channels in my stays. I use it for constructing entire dresses, but it comes in a massive spool and like it takes a while to get through one of these spools, but I'm, I'm almost done. And so I'll, I'll need to order another spool from them, but I really like it. It's strong once you've waxed it and it's just very utilitarian. You can use it for whatever. I also have a spool of a slightly um, thicker linen thread. This one is from William Booth Draper. Um, I bought this when I bought fabric for a pair of uh, Russian drill breeches or Russian drill trousers. That's what they're gonna, going to be. And this is just slightly heavier duty. And I figured, eh, I'm already ordering fabric. May as well also buy some thread. 
but this will be, I think, less useful to me because it's so thick. Um, but I guess a lot of 18th century clothes in the, from the period were sewn with kind of a um, thicker thread like this, but we'll see. This will at least be used for the uh, trousers. But I do need to order more of the Burnley and Trowbridge thread because this is much finer and I kind of prefer it. Next, we have a spool of silk thread. I don't reach for this too often, but it's always nice to have some fine, very strong thread in case uh, I'm sewing something like silk or fine cotton, or I just need fine, uh, strong thread for something. I think one time my glasses broke and I didn't have the, the little screwdriver, or and then the, the, I didn't have the little screwdriver to put my glasses back together, and I couldn't find the screw, so I actually like tied them back together with this silk thread and it worked. So it's pretty useful to have this. Next, I have just a little um, bobbin from my sewing machine with some yellow thread. I think this is like a poly blend. Um, this is not a color I use very often. So once I was done using the bobbin, I decided to put this uh, bobbin in my sewing box. I often keep bobbins that I'm not going to use in my sewing box so that I can use up the thread on basting and other purposes where the thread will just be like tossed out at the end. Um, but yeah, it's not a super historically accurate <laughs> thread, but it's, I'd rather not use my good linen thread when basting. Next, we have a little piece of Taylor's chalk. Um, this is in a plastic case. Uh, I like using Taylor's chalk for marking outlines when I'm cutting out uh, pieces of fabric or marking seam allowances. Um, this is obviously not the nicest stuff that you can buy. This is, I think, like whatever you find in uh, your big box fabric stores, but it's it works for me, so I like it. Um, next, we have my thimble. I am a recent convert to the school of thimble use, but my, I put mine on my middle finger, and this is just an old silver thimble. I think it's from my great-grandmother, great-grandmother? Maybe great-great-grandmother. She had a dry goods store in like the, around the turn of the century up until the 20s, I believe. But this is a size nine thimble. So thimbles have sizes. Once you find your size of thimble, you'll realize that they actually are magical items. Um, before this, I was like, oh, thimbles are too big for me. I don't like them. But now I really like them now that I have this one. <laughs> and it's, it has ridges on the sides and top, which make it a lot easier to push the needle through. And it just protects my fingers while I'm sewing. I also have two other thimbles here, one inside the other. Um, this is a leather thimble that I sometimes put on my thumb to protect it while I'm sewing and hope, uh, I don't use it very often, but it can be good when like binding stays or use, doing other really heavy tasks, as long as the leather doesn't puncture and then when that happens, the needle goes into my thumb, which is not fun. Um, there's also this old thimble that I was trying to use and I bent it into my shape, but I realized it's just too big. It doesn't fit my finger, um, but it's really old. It looks pretty worn down and it has a, it looks like somebody's, um, some company's promotional thimble because it has a company name around here. But I don't really use these. I should probably take them out of my sewing box, but eh, that's okay. Next, I have a small plastic button from a 1940s. I guess it's probably backlight if it's 40s. I don't know. Um, uh, anyway, a small button from a jacket of mine. It's just in here to remind me that I need to <laughs> <laughs> that I need to put this button back on my jacket. It's keeping me accountable. I also have two awls. I have a bone awl and a metal awl. This metal awl is really sharp, so I keep a little plastic cover on it. But I use, awls are used for poking holes in fabric to make an eyelet without like actually breaking the threads. It just kind of separates the threads. Um, I poke a hole with the sharper, finer metal awl, and then I use the bone awl um, to kind of widen that hole. Um, the bone all, I think the tip is supposed to be sharper, but it broke off. So it's more for widening purposes than for poking purposes, but I use these a lot. And last but not least, I have a tambour hook and needle. Um, I don't really do tambour embroidery. I took a class on it last summer and I thought, oh, I'm gonna get into tambour. And I have the, I have the needle in my um, box, but I've not been, <laughs> not been very productive when it when trying to tambour um, I've not gotten much work done on my project 
So this is more in here to keep me accountable and to remind me that I should probably get back to my tambour project. That's everything that's in my sewing box. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to hear what you keep in your sewing box, what you think is essential. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to Ollie for filming and editing and have a nice day. Bye.